Hello everyone, my name is Biggs and welcome to my Aircraft Carrier Tutorial Series. Tier 4 Aircraft Carrier Crash Course. Starting off, these are the best Tier 4 Carrier upgrades you can have. Air Groups Modification 1 and Aircraft Engines Modification 1. For your signals for the carrier, take flags that increase your torpedo flood chance and HE rocket bomb fire chance. For your carrier's camouflage, you want to take any camo that reduces your ship's detection. Flags are usually just for looks. I have the special military month contributor flag, so I run it. These are the best starting carrier captain skills. Your technique and how you play is better than relying on captain skills only. I'm using a low level captain to demonstrate this fact for this tutorial. You can use your engine boost ability while the engine cooling consumable is refilling your boost bar. To demonstrate, I'm boosting while my consumable is active. With the engine cooling consumable completed, my boost bar starts depleting as normal. This tactic gives you 5 seconds of free boost before your newly refilled boost bar starts depleting again. When scouting for targets at the beginning of a match, you will want to stop engine boosting just before you get to where you think the enemy is. By doing so, you will save from needlessly taking damage from accidentally boosting into AA range. Remember, most ships can be spotted by your planes while staying outside their AA range. To perform a tight turn, use air brakes by holding the S key. Note. Air brakes consume engine boost. Even though you can boost immediately upon takeoff, engine boosting only helps when at cruising altitude. You will see your plane's health bars on the screen once you have reached cruising altitude. Plane's health bars are displayed here. Rocket attacks become more accurate if you don't turn during the attack run. Watch how accurate the attack reticle becomes. HE rocket planes are for hunting destroyers and cruisers. They are also very fast, making them great for spotting targets quickly. Free look allows you to turn the camera to search for targets without turning your planes. This is activated by holding the right mouse button. While using free look, you still have full control of your planes, including starting attack runs. In this example, I use free look to maintain eye contact with my target to help line up an attack run. Broadside attacks always yield the highest hit chance for rockets. Torpedo bombers usually are your best damage source, but cannot weather AA attacks well. 
They are most accurate when you don't make any turns during their drop run. By gently moving your mouse left or right, you can fine tune your drop run. When lining up a drop run, you must make sure the torpedo will arm before it hits the target. If you don't, the torpedo shatters upon impact and does no damage. The beginning of the green area of the attack run indicates when the torpedo becomes armed. Ideally, you want to try to get a permanent flood on the target. This battleship repaired its flood, so I'm attacking again. Floods deal high amounts of damage per second and slow the target down. Try to hit the bow and or stern of the target with your torpedoes. These areas have no torpedo protection, meaning a torpedo will inflict maximum damage and have the highest chance to cause a flood. Here I demonstrate what happens if you hit the center of a ship. This is where the torpedo protection is located. As a result, each torpedo only did 3500 damage instead of 4233 damage and their flood chance was greatly reduced by the battleship's torpedo protection. Here I take very careful aim at the bow. Damage was better than the previous drop, but no flood.
while flying, you can still control your carrier by activating the carrier's autopilot system. To do this, open the map with the M key. Then, set a waypoint for the carrier to sail to by clicking anywhere on the map. To hit fast targets with torpedoes, you have to drop far in front of them. This is what happens when you drop your torpedoes too close. Oops, that's embarrassing. But it happens. Flooding is very dangerous for any ship type. Floods deal 0.25% hit points of damage every second to destroyers, cruisers, and carriers. Floods deal 0.50% hit points of damage every second to battleships, making them very scary for the ship type. They also reduce the speed of the target by 30%, and 60% if the target is in reverse, making them easy targets for friendly ships. Lastly, you can have two floods active on a target, one on the bow and one on the stern. Fire damage is equally scary if ignored. HE rockets and HE bombs have a chance to start a fire on any ship type they hit. If a HE rocket or bomb does penetrate the armor of a target, it deals full damage and gets its normal fire chance. If it does not penetrate the armor of a target, it deals no damage and its fire chance is reduced by 50%. A fire deals 0.3% total hit points of the ship's health and damage per second, and 1% total hit points and damage per second for carriers. Ships on fire have their surface detection range increased by 2 kilometers, making them easier to be detected by friendly ships. In addition, you can generate multiple fires on all ship types. Some nations, such as American and British high-tier carriers, are scary fire starters. A trait I didn't demonstrate much in this tutorial, but will in future videos. While it's best to keep your carrier concealed, eventually you will be detected by enemy ships or aircraft. If detected, you will always be prioritized by the enemy. You must assume you are being torpedoed or shot at. Once detected, send planes to scout your concealment perimeter to quickly find the threat. Simultaneously, you should plot a course to use islands to block line of sight, or to head away from the threat. In this case, I already plotted a course to use the islands as cover, so I prioritize killing the threat. By not course correcting and assuming he didn't get torpedoes off, I broke my own rule of being detected. 
this in action will cost me dearly in the near future. This is why you always want to course correct when detected. In general, you should always have your carrier moving, even if it's just in a circle. A still carrier is a very easy target once detected. At the beginning of the game, keep your carrier hidden and support your team from the backlines behind your battleships. At late game, your carrier should be pushing with your team, but continue to try and stay hidden. This will also help reduce flight times and provide AA support. Even if your carrier is badly hurt, you can still fight, fly, bomb, win. Here, I purposely attack even though fighters are nearby. I'll explain why in a future video discussing advanced topics. As my carrier gets closer to their base, my flight times shorten dramatically. spotted by his planes. Here he comes. Even though my carrier is destroyed, I still get to control my last launch squadron, but they only have three minutes of fuel. And with the last enemy destroyed, the game ends. Thank you for flying along with me. I hope this first video was educational. We covered a lot of ground on some basic and intermediate knowledge of carrier controls and mechanics.
In the future, I plan on doing more advanced carrier tutorials. If there are any topics you want me to cover, feel free to leave a comment. Until then, I will see you in the next video.